that were here in the winning team last year. Unchanged from their winning lineup at Murrayfield, and that means Teddy Holmes there for the second time with a side of youthful points, but Holmes and Gareth Davis providing experience in those crucial pivotal positions. Up front, a pretty solid tight five. Norster versus Lenehan, what a line-out duel that should be. And uh, here, Ireland, just one change from their courageous performance in drawing with France, and that means the return of the gifted young three-quarter Brendan Mullen at centre in a back division in which the new fly half this season, Paul Dean, provides the spark. Clean now, speeding up to the halfway. Looks inside, it's fallen to Gareth Davis again. Enterprise from Wales. Yes, well, what an enterprising move. The match has promised so much, hasn't it? And it started off in the right vein, because uh, one is always concerned that both sides want time to settle down. But Gareth Davis was quick to realise that he had an overlap, and with Mark White coming into the wing, fully utilised that move. Let's hope that he can continue. Again, to Paul Dean. Ringland outside, Ringland now. Runs inside, Ackerman holds him up, but driven on by Finor, and Ireland set it up on the Wales 22. Dean, Mullin, goes for the gap, he's clean through. What a run by Mullin. The pass, though, is loose, Crossan. Couple of metres out, Crossan, tantalisingly close. It's Nigel Carr, Ringland driving in. McCoy now. And a penalty to Ireland. But I wonder, should Brendan Mullen have passed? I wonder. Well, that'll be a $64,000 question, isn't it? The man had really done everything that had been asked for him. He cut the Welsh defence wide open. And I'm sure that everybody in this ground thought that Mullin was going to score. I think he delayed his pass. If he was going to pass, then he should have passed sooner. But Wales did well to, to gather the defence, and although they've given away the penalty, it looked a dead cert try. Some rather unsporting jeers, but I don't think it'll worry the man who got five penalties against France. 25 points in his first season as kicker. Oh, that's brilliantly struck. That's a beautiful kick. And Ireland are ahead. We've played nine minutes, and that really was a deserved result of that. And so, within the minute or so, Wales have a chance to pull back the three points through the boot of Mark Wyatt. 53 points for Wales in six internationals to equal Gwyn Evans' record, now can he level the scores? He's hooked it, it's coming back for Bradley, to Dean. That was meant for McNeil inside, Bradley at, in, at, has put Ringland through. There's the try. What a superbly placed kick that was. Irish flags are off as they take a lead, seven points, and that follows Trevor England's brace of tries against Scotland. Well, I think uh, Ireland are surprised that they've got back on this. I thought Dean was going to pass there, and I possibly had he. He might have had an overlap, but he did well. It's Bradley who causes all the problem. Now, Ringland was in a position that he was always going forward, and Lewis had to turn, and that was just enough to give Ringland the try. Quarter of an hour played. Brilliant. And what confidence that must now give to Ireland here. Superb quick thinking there, but... That's his seventh drop goal for Wales, and follows the one that announced his comeback to international rugby two weeks ago. He has to snatch at it, but the important thing from Wales's point of view, it puts them back in the match. It was Moriarty's, Moriarty's height at the back of the line-out that gave Wales the possession in the first place. Watch how quickly he has to get at it, because Dean is up very, very quickly on him. An excellent drop goal. But as I said, more importantly, gives Wales an opportunity to get back. For Ackerman, just tripped over his own man. I think it was Ring, he tripped over. Otherwise, he was clean under the post. For a second try against Ireland, that would have been for him. Well, it would be fascinating to see just what he tripped over, because it worked like a charm. Phil Lewis came in, tremendous acceleration to make the breach. And it looked as though Ackerman was just striding home. 
So now, the scrummage five metres out, Wales in control of it. Moriarty and the pack go for the pushover. Holmes dives, can't get it down or can he? Not this time. Holmes adamant, I think, that he might have got it down. Uh, a generous smile, but seeming convinced in his own mind he'd got there. Again held by Moriarty. Holmes poised, Gareth Davies goes left. You saw the signal. Lewis! Good try. And that's his first for Wales. And he took it brilliantly. Now, the things to watch here is that delay by Wales in the scrimmage. Watch home telling Gareth Davis, are you ready to go left? The release of the ball is vital. Now, Gareth Davis takes the Irish defence out and puts the pass in at the right moment for Phil Lewis to make it over the line. 9-7 the score, Mark White, the chance to level it. He's done exactly that. It's all square, and we're in injury time at the end of this week for barging by Wales on Donald Lenehan. Well, this would uh, be sweet for Ireland if he were to get it before half-time. It's a good effort. Oh, yes. 100% record remains for Michael Kiernan. And no sooner do Wales come back than Ireland, in turn, regain the lead. On the stroke of half-time through Michael Kiernan, tremendous excitement. Oh, yes, indeed. And that was a very foolish and could well be a very costly mistake by the experienced prop forward. So, a penalty attempt that could make it 12 points all. He's missed again. It's not been his day. Ditch to Wales, and this is Davis. Ring on the loop is Davis again. Now Mark Wyatt, tackled by Carr. And this was the long build-up. Tipley, and then Ackerman's kick that put Ireland in real trouble. McNeil, in fact, once he'd escaped the initial challenge, had plenty of time but didn't realise the fact. And as he got up, you'll see he lost possession. The referee then thereafter was playing advantage for the throw forward by, by uh, McNeil. And in the meantime, Norster just limping a bit. And it's Wyatt now, dropping it in Ireland's 22. Spillan has done well. The little chip and chase by Spillan again, recovers his own ball. Over the halfway line, that was great work by Ireland's number eight. This is McCoy. Head down and straight upfield again. There it is for Ireland, and this is Matthews to Bradley. Just managed to extricate his leg to get the kick in. And Lewis in trouble as Dean follows up Ringland's first tackle. Wales scurrying back in all sorts of problems and finally a scrummage given out to Dean Mullin, Kiernan McNeil, Crossan is in, what a try a classic of its kind, everything went right and Keith Crossan scores his first try for Ireland in his 8th international and that man, if any, has deserved it today. That was excellent. And I'm sure the things to watch for here are the timings of the passing. 
the injection of pace into the line. I thought that Dean really had taken it too far. I thought he'd misdirected the pass. But watch McNeil coming into the line. It's that pace which splits Wales apart. And look at the timing of the pass. Crossan still has to do it because Titley is a very, very pacey man indeed. He's having an excellent match and what a fine try. 69. Kiernan 100% so far. Keeps it that way. 18 points to nine, to A. Support again, that time by Pickering. Ackerman trying to set it out once more. Holmes does, Davies ring. And Ireland are offside, penalty to Wales. And I must say, three points here would make all the difference. Can he get it right this time? 18-9 as he kicks. And he's fluffed it. Five misses out of five penalty goals and uh, a sad day for Mark White and certainly not his normal form. Ireland are penalised. And Teddy Holmes is sticking with his principal kicker, Mark Wyatt. Well, there's always Gareth Davies waiting in the wings as a replacement five penalties missed can he get out of the rut I'm afraid not all the confidence gone the uh, nerves have taken over and I'm sure he's never kicked like this in his life and clearly Wales deciding that there's no point trying to kick for goal anymore after that succession of misses but Crossan does the needful again. Well, this was the build-up to that last attack here. Ring, lovely timing of the run by Gareth Davies. The chip through there was for Titley. But watch Crossan. Did enough. So he's uh, having to turn tail, but good work by Phil Lewis. But all the time, the play is in Wales' half, and that's where Ireland are quite happy to keep them with that scoreline in their favour. Two and a half minutes, plus injury time to go. It's been a fine ball round performance. And this could uh, set the seal on it now, as Wales, obstructed in the line-out, have conceded a penalty. And Michael Keenan, with his 100% record to date, and a tally of 10 points out of 18, can see Ireland home with this penalty goal. Two penalties, two conversions to Michael Keenan. 35 points for Ireland. This could be a happy moment. <laughs> and to a man, I look round. And the Irish are on their feet. I think they know that that's enough.